Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Newbrit Workshop. You may have seen my most recent video which showed the creation of this dust boot for my X-Carve CNC. And in particular, this dust boot fits the DeWalt writer which I now use in the X-Carve. In this video, I'm going to show you how to go about producing uh, the drawing file and then the various CNC files necessary to create this dust boot. Now I'm using Vectrix VCarve Pro software which is very much an industry standard for 2.5D uh, CNC work. Now you can see what we're about to create on the screen here. Uh, the uh, piece we're going to machine consists of this large cutout here uh, which is where the writer fits, a smaller cutout here which is for the dust collection hose, uh, there is a channel all the way around which is used to take the bristle and then we have to cut the finish shape out, out of the uh, rectangular piece of wood that we start with. So I've started Vectrix VCarve Pro and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new file. And here I can specify the dimensions of my blank piece of wood. And in my case its width is going to be 190 millimeters and its height is going to be 120 millimeters and its thickness is 19 millimeters and in this uh, thickness uh, option here you can specify where you want the uh, zero for the Z position to be and almost always uh, one would choose this to be the, at the top of the material and that's shown there you can also specify where you want uh, your x, y zero position to be. I'll just clear that box there. And I want it to be at the bottom left hand corner. And once you're satisfied with that, you click OK. So we've made our start. We've got uh, the uh, representation of the blank piece of wood that we're going to be uh, cutting our uh, dust boot from. Uh, and so we'll start straight away by defining the two cutout holes, one for the router, that's the large one, and then one for the uh, hose that goes to the extractor, the smaller of the two. And in order to do this I'm going to create a vector and I'm selecting the draw a circle option here. And immediately I click on that I've got a little uh, menu here which allows me to specify where the center point should be uh, and what the radius or the diameter should be. To simplify things, I know what the figures should be and I'm going to put these in straight away. I would like my X position to be 70 and I want my Y position to be 60 and that would put it at the center of this uh, piece of material. However, so I can illustrate uh, one point, I'm going to make it 50 and you'll see why shortly. Now I know what the diameter should be and the diameter for uh, this particular hole for the uh, router is 73.6 millimeters. And I'm now going to create it and there it is. And once it's created I can close it. Now I wanted this to be central to this line that goes through the middle this way. But it's not. If you remember I said it should be 50 up from the bottom. It should be 60. So if I select it and then go to this option here, Transform Objects, Align Selected Objects, and I'm going to click on that, I now have a variety of options. And they're almost self-explanatory. For example, I can center the object on the workpiece. I can center the object only left to right because you don't want to alter its up and down position. Or in my case this is what I want, I want to center it up and down, I'm quite happy with its left to right position. So I'll click on that and now my large circle is exactly where I want it to be. Its center is 70 millimeters from the left and it's 60 millimeters from the bottom. If I close this that is still selected as a circle. If I go to the circle option you can now see that says 70 for X, 60 for Y, defining the center of the circle, 
and my radius is exactly as it was, 73.6. So I'll close that. I'll unselect it by clicking anywhere uh, other than on the circle itself. Next, we want to create the smaller cutout for the dust extraction hose. And that should be over here somewhere. But I'm not quite sure uh, where it should be. Well, I am. I want it to be 20 millimeters from the edge of this hole here. Uh, so I'm going to go into the circle menu and I'm going to specify that I want it to be um, uh, any, any place really. Uh, 70 and 60 puts it uh, in the center of this circle and I want its diameter to be 35 millimeters. So I create that and close that. But it's in the wrong place. Now what I can do is to go to the uh, Transform Objects Move Selected Object and I can pick this object up and move it. If I move it slowly enough, as I cross the boundary of this circle, can you see how uh, the pointer changes to become a uh, aiming mark? If I let go now, the center of the circle now is on the edge of that boundary. Well, let's take it over a bit more, again slowly, and you'll come to a stage where again we've got the uh, aiming mark and I'll let go. So now this is sitting uh, with its uh, edge against the edge of the other circle. Now what I now need to do is to move it a further 20 millimeters to the right. And if you look here you can see its X position is defined as 124.3. Its Y position is 60, just as it should have been before. So what I'm going to do is go back into here and make this 1443. And I'm going to apply that. And lo and behold, the circle for the dust extractor hose is now 20 millimeters to the right of that one, exactly where we wanted it to be. So I can close that. And at this stage, I think it would be a good idea to do a, a save. So I'm going to save it as Demo Boot. Now the next thing we need to do is to create uh, the outer shape. Now I'm going to have a circle centered here, uh, which is uh, about 15, 16 millimeters bigger uh, all the way around than this circle. So about 30 millimeters bigger in diameter than the uh, one that's used for the hole for the DeWalt. So I'm going to uh, go circle. Uh, my center just happens to be where I want it to be. Uh, now in this case I'm going to make the diameter 105. 1, 0, 5. And I'm going to create it. And there's my outer circle. Now for the circle that goes around here uh, I want to be centered on this circle. So there's a variety of ways you can do that. Uh, one way I found is to uh, select that circle uh, and then uh, copy, then paste. So I've now got a second version of that circle there. I'll click on that once and I'm now going to go to the circle menu and now uh, create uh, the new circle which is slightly bigger than the old one. And in this case, it's going to have a diameter of 65 millimeters, but its center is going to be in the same place. So I now apply, and now you can see uh, that circle I've now created. So I've now got part of my outer boundary here and part of my outer boundary there. Now all we've got to do is to link these two with straight lines and get rid of what we don't need. Now throughout all of this I want you to understand that, that I'm not an expert with VCarve Pro. Uh, I'm just showing you well, the way I created my dust boot. So what I'm about to go into now, there may be a thousand better ways of doing it. Uh, well, this is the way that I've found to do it and it works. So I now want to create the line that goes from the edge of this circle at a tangent to the edge of this circle at a tangent and similarly down here. So I'm going to choose my line drawing uh, creation option here. And I could enter the details if I knew uh, where the line was going to go, but I don't. So I'm going to make my best guess at drawing the line. 
and I'm going to have a go at drawing it from there to there. And when I finish drawing the line, I can either right click or I could press the escape button. Now, I don't know whether that line is in the right place. Um, I really want it to be, so I'm going to look very closely at it. I'm using the wheel on the mouse now uh, to zoom in dynamically. And as I get closer in, and you really do need to get very close in, you can see that uh, here's the circle and here's my line. And my line actually goes through the circle at this point here and continues a little bit. Now that will give us trouble later. So I'm going to choose this option here, which is the pair of scissors under the edit objects. It's the interactive vector trim. And I'm now going to go to this bit of overhanging line here, and I'm going to click on it. And that's now taken away the extra bit of line that went beyond, and I don't need that. So I've dealt with that. I'm now going to zoom back out again. And I can zoom all the way back out by going zoom to fit. Now let's have a look at this area here to see if we've got any issues. And I'm going to go right in. Ooh, uh, this at this end, it really is a bad fit. So this time I'm going to use another tool which allows me uh, to pick up the end of the line and move it. And in order to do this, we go down to Edit Objects, and it's the second option in, which is Node Editing. And I need to, first of all, click on my object uh, and then go to Node Editing or vice versa. And you can see now I can grab the end of that line. And I'm going to do my best now to move it onto that circle. And when I've finished, I press the Escape or the right-hand mouse button. I'm just going to move in to see how good that is. It's not quite perfect, and I'm going to use that same scissors tool that I did before. Scissors, and I'm going to go for the extra bit of the straight line, which I don't want, and then zoom to fit. So I've now got a line. So now we've got our first line. I want a, an exact copy down here. Well, I don't need to go through all that rigmarole to draw it again if I select it. And there's a mirror option under Transform Objects. I'm going to press the mirror button. And what I want to do is to uh, flip it uh, on the vertical line, like so. And so it's flipped vertical. It's created a second version of it here. And I'm going to close that. Now, I now need to take away the bit of this circle, which we don't need, and the bit of that circle we, that we don't need. So I'm now going back to the scissors command here. And just to give you an exa example of how it works, where these two circles cross, if I just go scissors there, it's cut away that piece. If I go scissors there, it's cut away that bit. Provided this line intersects with this circle, and provided this line intersects with that circle, uh, when I click on these bits, I should get rid of those bits of circle that we don't want. And the same here. And the same there. Right, we've now created the large hole for the cutout for the router, the smaller hole for the cutout for the end of the extractor hose, and we've now defined the outer shape. But we've now got to somehow define this channel uh, that's going to be used for the bristle. 